Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 256, after you start with a flashback to Gojo explaining Black Flash extremely into Yuta and Akari on how it works from his perspective and just the overall theory behind it. We learn that even though Gojo has the six eyes, which allows him for a greater understanding and manipulation of cursed energy, as amazing as Gojo is, even he can for force or just use it at will because black flashes tend to happen randomly. And there are a lot of circumstances involved in them how a black flash occurs, such as the way that you use cursed energy to amplify your heads to even the temperature and the moisture in the air. And since Gojo's fights don't last long enough, like his fight with Sukuna and the Ten Shadows, he doesn't have a real chance at landing Black Flashes as much as someone like Nanami who has the most recorded consecutive Black Flashes ever. Now, what is interesting about what Gojo was saying here is actually does contradict the narration of the story. Because I think it was stated at least earlier on in the manga that Yuji was able to use Black Flash at will against Maito. And it was sort of implied that Cursed Energy, you know, even though it's not like the Force from Star Wars, it does seem to have a will of its own and shows favoritism to certain people. And this will likely be the case because the narrator, or Gege, flat out says that Yuji will surpass Gojo in terms of overall Black Flashes, which is just absolutely insane. But in any case, it cuts back over to Miguel, Choso, Yuji, and Maki jumping Sukuna after he landed a Black Flash on LaRue. And thankfully, Sukuna didn't regain his RCT Alpha from landing Black Flashes, but the only reason why this is the case, or at least, you know, it's pretty much implied in this chapter, is because of Yuji's punches, attacking Sukuna so directly, which is messing with his curse and the output and control over Megami's body. But this is actually starting to spook everyone, especially Miguel, who has a fellow brother, you know, his chances of dying are 99% higher than the overall cast, but... You know, all jokes aside, this is true because if Sukuna is able to land multiple black flashes, which he does in his chapter, eventually he get his RCT output back and control over his cursed energy. And well, I mean, if that just happens, well, yeah, the story is pretty much over from there, which really does put a lot of importance on Yuji because if Yuji goes down for the count, the fight is pretty much over. Like they stand absolutely no chance. In any case, going over the fight and this choreography of it, we just see that Choso and Yuji rush Sukuna using the infrastructure and blood manipulation, which Choso helps Yuji use since he still hasn't fully mastered all of the techniques such as convergence, which is pretty much the most basic blood technique that you even need to use the actual rest of them. But Sukuna is just drawing them around like ragdolls. And Maki tries to go in for the kill with the soul supplanting Katana, but Sukuna uses his curse technique to hold the sword back and lands a black flash on Maki's Enderman, which pretty much sends her flying and finishes off with a dismantle, which I think might have actually killed her. I don't think it did. At least, what at the very least, it did fairly injure her to the point where she's out for the count for the time being. Because now that Sukuna is getting the buff on the black flashes, his curtain turf technique is becoming a lot more lethal again. The type of injury that Maki suffered is one where, you know, I'm not entirely sure if she could actually hear from it. Before Sukuna can get the thirst on Maki, Choso comes in with a safe and blocks the slashes using a supernova. But Sukuna sends the slashes towards Choso, using it as a distraction and actually speeds blitz him, with Sukuna landing another black flash on Choso. Which, yeah, man, this really does show how fast Sukuna really is being able to outrun his own slashes, which are almost instead or really pretty much impossible to dodge but also how much stronger he's gone from landing the black flash as compared to the last couple of chapters when he got jumped and luckily Choso was able to negate some of the damage from the black flash using the blood manipulation form an hour armor around his stomach and grabbed Sukuna which allowed Yuji to land the hit on Sukuna pushing him away we see a montage of Yuji and Sukuna just going at it grabbing each other drawing punches until Yuji lands a piercing blood on Sukuna point blank with the help of Chozo, who likely gives Yuji the condensed blood since Yuji hasn't fully mastered convergence, which is the first step of blood manipulation Yuji needs to do in order to use a blood curse technique, or at least maybe a curse tool that would help him use the blood manipulation. You know, I really don't know what's going on with that, but uh, yeah. And then cuts back over to Miguel, who didn't do anything in this chapter except look cool carrying LaRue, and tells him, hey man, uh, we did our part, it's time to bounce. Which reading this made me laugh real hard, but LaRue not being scary is like, nah, I have to stay, I, I gotta do something real quick. 
which, you know, what LaRue does is probably the most important thing I think any character in this series has ever done other than Angel freeing Gojo or Gojo nerfing Sukuna. Because in the next panel, we see that Yuji is locked into the zone and is about to land a Black Flash on Sukuna, who is actually sensing that this is about to happen. But before he can react, we see that LaRue curse technique is actually used to catch Sukuna's attention because other than being able to manifest a giant hand, Luru's technique allows him to attract the attention of anyone's heart he physically touches. And this was so satisfying to see because Sukuna had wrote off Luru's curse technique as not being nothing special and well I mean his curse technique what may be caused the stonewall effect of Sukuna's defeat because Yuji lands a soul punching black flash point blank on Sukuna. And the Black Flash was so strong that the narrator announces that it's causing an awakening with Yuji Itadori, with his eyes looking a lot like Sukuna's whenever Sukuna was in control of his body. And we're finally seeing that Gojo's prediction of Yuji getting Sukuna's curse techniques, most notably cleave in his mantle and likely Sukuna's true innate curse technique that he hasn't used since the Heian era, and Kenjaku almost implying that Yuji would eventually be as strong as Sukuna to the point where he wouldn't want to be around when the two of them actually go at it, is finally in motion. So yeah, after almost 6 years of build up of Yuji's characters and well, 6 years of Yuji suffering non-stop, well he's finally getting the main character status that he really does deserve. Because I'm not gonna lie, these last few chapters, or really the entire series, I low-key thought that Gojo was the main character. But let me know down in the comments what do you guys think is going to happen next. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.